Welcome back into the Sports Source Six segment of our show. Brought to you by Tenova Healthcare. And boy, they've got locations all over East Tennessee. If you have a health need, you've got Physicians Regional Medical Center downtown, Turkey Creek Medical Center, North Knoxville Medical Center up in Powell, Jefferson Memorial Hospital, La Follette Medical Center, Newport Medical Center, Lakeway Regional Hospital. You can turn to Tenova if you have a medical emergency or just any kind of medical need. Tenova, that's who I trust. Check out Tenova.com. All right, we've saved the most pumped up vol for life. Hey, Former baby. vol quarterback Sterling Hinton is with us. Congratulations, Sterling. You've said all year, are they going bowling? We're going to a bowl, baby. We're going and we're there, baby. Woo! All right. Hey, this segment's necessary roughness. Bobby, I know uh, we, we ended the last segment talking about Josh Dobbs. There was one thing that was kind of out of character for him, one thing you didn't like yesterday. It was out of character, I'm hoping, uh, because it looked like he caught himself. Uh, after he ran a touchdown, he's, he's standing there looking up in the stands and he starts this. And uh, that, I just don't think there's any place for that for a guy that uh, is supposed to, supposed to be a, a pretty smart fella. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, just, uh, I, just, I just didn't like it. I just think uh, the, leave that to Johnny Manziel and, uh, and his personality. You don't have to show that stuff. No, I don't disagree, especially in the circumstances. You had a so-so game against Vanderbilt on a 6-6 team. Let's not start the showboating yet. I, mm -hmm. I did think it was funny, though. The Vanderbilt players, they caught dancing down 10 to nothing. They held Tennessee <laughs> to a field goal, and they're dancing on the sideline. And I thought, only a Vanderbilt. All right. Yeah. Um, guys, I want to start with my own negative here. And we mentioned it last week. Never would have thought this, but when you look at A.J. Johnson out of the lineup, your leading tackler, your leader on defense, or Matt Crowder, your starting center out, I think 99.9% .9 of the people would have said, I'm more worried about the Johnson thing. But... Crowder's absence has been noticeable. Some numbers I want to show you. You know, you saw improvement out of that offensive line when Jacob Gillib came back for the uh, back at the Alabama game. South Carolina, Kentucky, with Matt Crowder at center, you only allowed six negative plays in those two games, from, six plays from negative yardage, one sack. Without Crowder in there the last two weeks, 21 negative plays, nine sacks allowed. Dylan Wiseman, got thrown into, the, thrown into the lion's den. He hasn't played a lot this year to get him in there. Uh, you expect him to improve, but right now, boy, the loss of Matt Crowder looking huge. I mean, this, it was almost like, okay, we finally got all the plates spinning, and then your darn center goes out, and it all kind of caves in here. Thoughts on the offensive line? Your center is your toughest guy to replace most offensive line because he's the leader, the guy that gets everybody in the right call in a lot of areas. And I think he'd been a stable point within that offensive line the whole year. So when you do lose him, it is a big factor, and it is a more of a factor than most people, I think, would think out there, uh, uh, you know, about what offensive line takes to do. Yeah, not only snapping the ball, everybody thinks about the snaps, and he had some high, he had some low, but certainly the protections and just doing your job in there. Well, he's a quarterback of the offensive line, and you lose him, and I mean, not only did you lose him, but you know, you believe in it. When he, when he, what he says goes, and all of a sudden you got another kid in here that's probably guessing, doesn't know as much, and don't have as much confidence in him, and therefore. And things kind of fall apart. Yeah, you know, an offensive line is is hard to be faking. You have to react. And uh, right now, I believe he's he's paying a lot of attention to his first job, of getting the ball to the quarterback. And uh, then he's re, he's uh, he's thinking about who, who what call to make. And that's unfortunate. That gives him that little fraction of a second of being slow to react. And unfortunately, it's hurt us in a couple. Well, of the plays. thing is, you saw not to Doc Wiseman too too much here because. You saw it from all the rest of these guys earlier in the year. Yeah. But when they were first in there for their first starts, you went through some serious growing pains. Mm -hmm. It's a shame, though, that you had one, you had to go back in, in time a little bit and restart with two games to go in the season. The one thing I like about Wiseman, though, he's not crying about his responsibility. He's stepping up to the plate. He's giving everybody the best he can do. And I think overall, you just have to say, this offensive line was not very deep. The guys that were starting were not great. They're not all Americans that you're coming in. So your second string guys, when guy gets hurt, you're not exactly saying we're going to an all-SEC guy right. surprise out of the, out of we pulled him out of the air. Yeah, you had one guy that had six starts to his name on the offensive line. Period. That's it. So you're replacing green with green. You went from, greener. You, yeah, you went from you, you went from kind of a Kelly or pea green to a forest green. All right. uh, what about the downfield passing game, Mr. Quarterbacks down here? Non-existent right now. They have wide receivers out. Those receivers who are in there, the young guys, there's no question they have a hard time beating press coverage. That's something you're only going to learn that over time. Um, your offensive line isn't exactly giving Dobbs time to drop back and wait for longer routes. Thoughts on the deep passing game and where it's gone and how you fix it? I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's anywhere 
where it needs to be. I think, uh, uh, you know, with the, with the line problems, you, you've got uh, Dobbs, you know, that's having to scramble around. Uh, it's, as somebody said a while ago, he does keep his head downfield looking, you know, for receivers and everything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just not where it needs to be. He needs, you know, he needs a lot of work at it and needs to get our, the receivers, you know, get these guys that are hurt, get them back in there. Hopefully uh, that can happen, you know, during this uh, three or four weeks before the uh, bowl game. Sterling, very quick. As I see it, he's all time and continuity. You know, he hasn't had m many reps with these guys that are playing. The main guys are hurt, unfortunately. But, hey, we won. Let's get better off wins. Continue to get better off wins. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about Tennessee's bowl situation. And, yes, they are eligible. But, technically, technically, there's a possibility they're still not going to go bowling. That's not going to happen. But, technically, it could. It is a confounding bowl system now. More confusing than it's been. We will try and explain it in about five minutes in the next segment. It's going to be difficult. Come on back on the Sports Source. Quality. Quick. Trust Fast Frame.